So in today's video I'm going to review this MiniWare MDP P906 little mini power supply. Now I actually saw MiniWare post on Twitter about this thing and I actually said to them hey would you like me to review one and they said okay we'll send you one and they did. So let's get to it. I actually know very little about this thing to be honest. It's in this plastic case all nicely presented Unfold to read safety instructions thing. Well, basic or break additions. The firmware updates. Warranty stuff. Um, there's other language stuff on the back there. Okay. Is that the same as that side? No. Okay. So we got description about the inputs and outputs. So outputs are some terminals on the side, as we'll see in a second. Got some setting buttons and things like that. Inputs. Just a conform way FCC conformance statement foam and here it is. There's also a box in the bottom here too. We'll have a look at that in a second, see what's in there. So this is the little beastie, tiny little thing. It's actually quite heavy. So inputs DC 4.2 to 30 volts um, through the DC jack because it's got a round DC jack here and a USB-C. USB-C is 20 volts at 5 amps and so the DC jack is 14 amps max. Output 0 to 30 volts, 0 to 10 amps. 10 amps from a little thing like this, that's impressive isn't it? Um, it's got a little cooling fan in here, got some heat sinking just here. It's also ventilation, there's holes through to the inside so that's ventilation holes there. Um, there's a some kind of socket on here. It's like 3.5 mil or 2.5 mil. 2.5 mil socket, some kind. And obviously these are the banana jacks. Let's look in this box. What's in here? So it's got some banana to clip lead cables, which are actually these are silicon cables, that's nice. Okay, so you want to clip onto a circuit with these, you can do that. I won't be doing that. One of my first observations. It's this spacing. Anyone who's been around test gear for a while will know that banana jacks tend to be a 19mm or 3 quarter of an inch spacing. These are not that. Which is a shame. It would be nice if they were the correct standard spacing, you know, because then you just plug in basically any cables you've got lying around which have got that spacing on them. Um, but it shouldn't really matter that much. It's just me being a little bit fussy, I think. Well, I need to power this up somehow. Hmm. USB C it might be. I have a USB-C power supply over here. It probably doesn't do enough current to put it through its full paces, but see what happens. So that's plugged in. That should be providing some power. Hmm. Maybe it's not. Take it here. Plug it back in. Nope. Hmm. That power supply doesn't appear to be compatible. Because all this is is actually a USB-C connector going to a smart USB charger which is basically just a normal USB-A output so yeah this won't generate 20 volts thinking about it so yeah it might be compatible I need to find a power supply let me get one right so we've got a USB power supply out let's plug this in try it this way there we go now we've got life it's all lights up Okay. So that's one in the voltage up and down. Let's get a bit closer. So this dial is scrolling through. How do I change which digit it's on, I wonder? Set. That chooses which one. Menu. Input. That's the input voltage. Input current. Limiting. Current temperature, firmware version 1.31.118. Is this just only adjustable in this way? Surely not. Right. There must be a better way. Surely there's a better way than this. It looks like it's got 10 millivolt steps with 1 millivolt resolution and the current is one milliamp steps and it looks like it's got a velocity control on actually 
Yeah, it does. Okay. That's the upper on. Well, let's test this thing, see if we're actually getting much out of it. Oh, now we've got full screen, if I do it that way. TX and RX address. It's got Bluetooth or Wi Fi on it. So, yeah. 2.478 gigahertz. Can't limit load. Voice adjust. Program output. Right, okay. So, I set to 3 amp limit. Well, let's actually test the output, shall we? Got onto this Keysight U1282A, which I recently got given to do review on. Turn the output on. So we're showing us 5.001 or so. It's fluctuating about one or two millivolts there. Because there's obviously no loading on it, so it's probably not doing so well. And we're getting about three millivolts on here. So it's a bit of a difference. But this is stable. That's jumping around very slightly. So I think this might actually get better when you put a bit of loading on it. But in this state, it's looking stable. So what I think we should actually do is check AC millivolts, see if there's any ripple showing up. And don't forget, there's no loading, so you may not see anything. And it's basically below a millivolt, look at that. There's like nothing there. What I actually need to do is hook this up to my electronic load, put some loading on it, and see what happens. So here we are. Now I actually have a convenient gap above my electronic load between this load and the shelf, and this just sits in there really nicely. So you can actually see both screens at the same time. That's quite nice. Um, you want constant current mode. Currently, it's currently set at 4 amps, just a bit high for what we want. We don't want to do that much just yet. Let's do 100 milliamps for now. Turn the output load on so you can see what the literal load says and what the power supply is saying. So, a little bit of loading on there. It is interesting this is fluctuating around as much as it is. This on this display there. The output's not looking too bad, it's a bit of fluctuation. Okay, let's go a bit higher. So, 200 milliamps. 500 milliamps. Keep it output sag here, but it could be because of the leads. The leads are usually quite long. 800. Now the current reading on here is getting a bit closer. 1 amp. Now this is supposed to be current limited to 1 amp, don't forget. That's what we've got it set to. So it should actually be limiting to 1 amp. 1.1. Yep, still limiting to 1 amp, and the voltage has collapsed. So that's working correctly. Okay, figured out something. So though we're doing this dial, was doing like, in this case, one milliamp at a time. You probably can't see it too well on camera. But if I hold the set button and then do it, it shifts by 100 milliamps at a time. So it's like a fast set. So that's good. That's fine. That's um, that's good. So I set this up to maximum. I can do. We can do 10 amps. So let's do that. Voltage I'll leave that at five volts. What if the same thing does on that? Yes, it does. That does 100 at a time. Instead of 10. So yeah, okay. So that's a nice little note. Hold the set button down while you're turning this and it makes it go faster. I thought it'd be a way of doing it. So now we're still set at 5 volts, but now we've got a 10 amp current limit. I'm not quite sure how the power supply is going to handle this. Um, with the actual brick I'm using to power it with. 5 amp output at 20 volts. So in theory we should be able to do enough power to run this thing. That should be okay. So let's turn the output on. And let's load it up. So we've still got the 1 amp setting as we had before. And let's wind this up. Yeah, 1.5 amps. No worries at all. It's actually looking really accurate in there now. So 2 amps, no worries. 3 amps, no problem at all. 5. Yep. 7. A bit more voltage sag here, but that could be because of the cables, like I said. I can hear the fan running quite hard now. 9 amps and 10 amps. There we go, we've maxed it out. Count limiting is kicking in. But this voltage sag is interesting. Anyway, that's 40 watts out of that little thing. Let's give it down to 1 amp. Let's try a different voltage. So there we go, we've now got it set at 12 volts output. Still doing 1 amp, so therefore we're doing bit more power, 12 watts now. So let's do 2 amps. Now this might affect the output maximum. We'll see what it drops off at. It might drop down a bit sooner. We'll see. Here we go. 6 amps is collapsing quite badly there. Look. From that voltage. 
4 to 5 amps is where it collapses. Now that could be my main power supply collapsing. It collapses right down there. Okay, but it's still not bad though, I mean 12 volts. 4 amps out of this little thing. Surprisingly good. Let's change the voltage again. It just smoked. It just blew up whilst I was adjusting it. Unbelievable. That's with no load on it. <laughs> oh dear. Magic smoke. That's not what's meant to happen. So what I was doing is I was adjusting the voltage. So I've adjusted the voltage up to 30 volts. Then I was dropping down the current limit. And I was dropping it down to 3 amps. And in fact, I was, that's about the 3 amp mark I was at at the time. And I was still going down with it. I was going to drop it down to a couple of amps. And um, that's when it went pop. And all the smoke came out. It wasn't actually under load. It's exactly like this. I mean, the load is not doing anything. There's no load on it. It's set at 0 amps. So why it popped whilst I was adjusting it, I don't know. That's not good, is it? So that's a bit of a fail. I'm trying to review this thing and it's blown up. That's disappointing. Let's open it up and find out what blew up. Let's try and get in. Now, I did actually have a poke around the sound. I found there's a screw right on this corner. Right there. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. There's a screw right here on this corner. There it is. So I'm just going to peel this foot out of the way under the screw. And I'm guessing there's three more just like it in other spots. If I can get the rubber to stay out of the way. Got to get this apart. I think it'll come apart here somewhere. I guess so. This is a fan assembly, it's got some push connectors on here, heatsink pads. Which are touching on these copper heat sinks here. So I wasn't planning on doing a tear down on this thing, but you know, I guess we are now. So the red one's by the copper heat sink, don't forget that. Let's see how this comes out. Hmm. I'm guessing this end leaves out. Yes, it does. And you unhook the back. Right, there's a flex in there. Let's get that out. Put it from this side. Okay, what went bang? Well, I thought it would be on this board, because this looks like the main power output side of it. And this is all the controller side of it. And the controller still seem to be fine. It's still on, it looks like it's still trying to control, but... Yeah. Okay. Microscope time. Alright, so i got the microscope out. Let's have a look. See if we can see what's gone wrong. So you spit the board a little bit. A bunch of MOSFETs here. They look fine. I haven't seen anything yet. Yeah, like if you see any holes in components. But something's definitely gone bad. <laughs> Very, very bad. Um, 
Is that something there or not? Is that like a little splash mark just there? That? What's that? Could be nothing. Yeah, it's nothing. Yeah. I don't know. I thought I would see something more obvious. The flex there. Nothing, just ribbon stuff there. Um, what's that? No, that looks alright. Okay. Um, I don't know. Let's look around the other side a bit more. Some MOSFETs under there. Nothing with them. That look fine. Somewhere, something has blown up. But, where is it? Because it absolutely stinks. How's it look alright? Yeah. I, I don't know. It's a mystery. Because I haven't yet found anything that's actually wrong with this yet. There's nothing visually. Okay, let's check the control ball in case it is on that ball. Well, um, I don't know. That was interesting. ETC, temperature sensor there, okay. Well, uh, yeah, she's dead, Jim. No, oh, I think I found it. You see that splatter mark just there? And you see those lines leading away from it? I think this 35 volt capacitor right here has spewed its guts out. That's what I think it is. I was trying to identify what the smell is. It doesn't smell good. It's actually stuck the whole house out. <laughs> but that's the only thing I can see. I can't see any holes and components and all that. I think this capacitor, although it's rated 35 volt, couldn't handle 30 volts. That's what I think has gone wrong. Oh dear. So if you look at this capacitor in place on the board, if you tip it up, you can see it's also looking higher and slightly wonky compared to all the others. If you look at this way around. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's extruding itself out. I'm not sure, but I think that kind of agrees with what I'm observing with this splash mark over here, with this being tipped over. I think it's built up pressure and it's pushed it up and it's popped over this direction. Bag capacitor. That's unlucky. So the bag capacitor explains why it just popped with no load on. Well, it wasn't due to a current, it was due to voltage. And obviously this capacitor, that's 35 volt rated, it, uh, it couldn't take the 30 volt supply. So, uh, damn. Thing is, you've got a whole bunch of these ones. There's you know, five more over here of the same type. Maybe they're all a bit dodgy. I don't know. But I thought the red ones are like polymer caps rather than electrolytic. So I don't know, maybe there's some other thing going on there. But what does the red band mean? I don't know. I thought it meant polymer. It worked well until it blew up. <laughs> oh dear. I think I can chalk this up to bad luck, really. I mean, it's a 35 volt cap. And I'm presuming it's a 30 volt output, not a 35 volt output. So it should have been within tolerance of the cap, and the cap's blown. So I'm thinking it's just a bad capacitor. Right, I've replaced the capacitor with another one. I, it's a 100 microfarad cap. I only had a 47, so I've put a 47 in there. It's hopefully enough. It's like there's a whole bunch of capacitors in parallel. Hopefully it still works. 
Uh, shouldn't have to do that, but anyway, power on. See if it works. Okay. It's still trying to function. Excellent. 30 volt output. Let's turn the output on and see if it smokes. Also, now this has got these indicators over here too. Blue and green indicators. Nice. They light up when it's on. Okay. Well, so far so good. It looks like maybe it's just that one bad cap. Because what happened is I put up 30 volts and then immediately change the current limit, I was dropping that down, there's no load on it at the time, and I was dropping that down to set it to a reasonable level, and then whilst I was doing that, then it died, and you know, all the, well, it didn't actually die, it's still on, but all the smoke started coming out and it popped. So I turned it off then, obviously, to cut the power, because the smoke was actually getting worse and worse, because obviously the power was still going through the part which is blowing. Just like that one particular capacitor was probably bad, obviously a manufacturing fault or something with that one particular capacitor, and now it seems fine. I can carry on. I think. Let's plug this thing back into my load and carry on where we were. Right, back to where we were. 30 volt output is set. We are getting 30 volts out, so it is still working. Let's turn the load on. And our current is currently set at zero. So 100 milliamps. Yep, it's basically getting there. Same kind of error reading there as before, so it's slightly off. Not by much. So let's go 500 milliamps. I'm a bit more confident about it. That's looking alright. So that's doing 15 watts. Let's do 1 amp. So that's doing 30 watts now. It's not bad, is it? Now I set the current limit at 1 amp. That's triggering just fine. No worries at all. I think we just got a bit unlucky there with a the bad capacitor. So otherwise it seems fine. It's a shame. We might have to repair it first, but um, yeah, it's one of these things, isn't it? Things go wrong sometimes. It's a bit unlucky. In a way, it's lucky it was me. You know, if it's happened to somebody else, it maybe could happen to somebody else, I don't know. Maybe there's a bunch of these which are bad. Who knows? It could just be this one capacitor. And if it's going to happen to someone, it's best happens to me. Because at least I can fix the damn thing. Now increase the current limit to 3 amps. Let's turn the output on. So the indicator is on the saying it's on. Turn the load on. And then we can wind this current up some more. before you limited it to one amp so we go a bit higher than it now I'm not quite sure how it's going to drop off there we go it's dropping off there so it's probably a power supply like the brick power supply I've got feeding this which is struggling with that particular current that's doing 50 watts so yeah it's probably the brick which is struggling there so I think that's fine so just now I was trying to figure out why I couldn't adjust the current limit or anything anymore because I accidentally locked it it's got a lock symbol here so it means you can lock the values so you can't accidentally put out too much power that's a nice little feature I don't know what this does. I mean, it does beep, but it doesn't seem to do anything. I don't know. I should read a manual or something. Yeah, anyway. Well, this review didn't quite go to plan, but uh, <laughs> I was still able to demonstrate it. I was even able to repair it. I suppose that's a good thing, isn't it? It's repairable. So thanks a lot, Miniware, for sending this to me at no cost, and uh, hope you found that interesting. I certainly did. Catch you later.